All right, in this episode, we talk about weighted ball holds and early trunk rotation. Porcio, Steven Godani here at the at Top Velocity Hashtag Pitch Tip Show, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, at Top Velocity Hashtag Pitch Tips, Hashtag Baseball Tips, ask your question answered on the show. Um, summer's ending, only got two camps left. If you haven't uh, signed up for the two extra 3X camps, uh, mainly was talking about those 3X camps, two of those left, I would do that ASAP. Also, two, if you want to come down and train, those guys uh, have been through camps, want to come back and train. Um, we've got settled into the new facility, so we got our weight room back, we're in our weight room, and we've got the throwing area. It's pretty cool, we've got cameras that, that'll do self-analysis for you. You can uh, connect to and do self-analysis, and our biomechanic suit's coming at the end of the week, so it's gonna get exciting here, so stay tuned for all this cool biomechanic stuff that's gonna be coming out. I'm excited. I'm excited too. Um, it got stopped at customs because I'm sure they thought it was something bad. They're like, this is illegal for sure. They're like, the guy was like, um, what's this stretchy material? I'm just the whole time I'm thinking, oh my God, he thinks I'm a terrorist. Because <laughs> you're trying to become Iron he's like, Man. Yeah, he's like, what are you using this for? I'm like, uh, biomechanics. He's like, uh, but wouldn't that be like one sensor? Like, why do you have all these sensors? I'm like, uh, well, we put them on each joint so we can see all the movements. And then he's like, well, what, it's a full suit you wear and it's like stretchy material? I'm like, yeah, it's a full suit. You're like, I work for Stark Enterprises, man. I'm making an Iron Man suit. Exactly. That's Relax. What I said. I'm Iron Man. <laughs> I'm Batman. Um, all right, cool. So what's the question for today? Ryan Nowick asks, can you talk about the science behind whether holds are beneficial or not in comparison to throws? Ryan, you know, there, there's uh, studies that pretty much show that tennis players didn't have near the amount of shoulder injuries that baseball players have. So they uh, hypothesized that the... Uh, the, the, the tennis racket, holding onto the tennis racket, somehow protected the shoulder. So what they found was, is because you're holding on the racket, you're going to have to internally rotate earlier. Also, too, the weight of that would strengthen your decelerators. I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of hypothesis. Um, I, I know in those programs where they do holds, they don't do a lot of throws with the ball. I think they just do just a lot of holds with the ball. I would say that's good for deceleration. Um, holding on to it. It also trains early internal rotation. I use this little device in the preseason guide. I took a bat handle, or I basically took a wooden bat, I tucked it, cut the handle off, tied a rope to it, to a ball, and it does the same thing. But I, I like, you know, a lot of it with the holds, they'll do it with a sock or just holding the ball. I do like having the weight farther at the end, like a racket. It makes you turn in your internal rotation over quicker. Why does internal rotating earlier protect the arm or help decelerate the arm is because um, it the longer you stay in external external rotation the later you pronate the faster you're going to pronate so the earlier I pronate um, the the less speed is going to hit my arm at internal at internal rotation okay if I wait too long and then try to internal rotate I'm, what it is is I'm gonna have less time less distances to internal rotate to generate the speed so the earlier internal rotation it's typically a healthy arm and typically high velocity pitchers have early interrotation. Gives you more distances through that interrotation to decelerate the ball. If you waited too late and tried to internally rotate, it's not enough distance. And then too much more torque hits the, arm. Yeah, hits the arm and that varus torque. If you get soreness on the top of the elbow, back of the shoulder, you're a late pronator, internal rotator. And that's what you're experiencing. So something like my little you know, bad hand on the ball really works. Putting a, a ball in a sock works. And, and just practice those. That, those are good just to teach the arm to, to internally rotate early and, and to actually decelerate with some added weight. But, you know, I think we're all trying to be too sports specific. You don't have to hold these balls to train your decelerators. You can do that with all of our, like, rotator cuff routines that we do in our programs with light dumbbells and tubing. It's the same thing. Um, so I think it's a little too glorified on, um, like, it's... Um, really that effective for a lot of velocity I wouldn't say it's that significant um, a lot more things you can do significantly to help velocity but I think there if I'm gonna support any type of weighted ball throwing it's gonna be holds 
I'm not going to really support uh, much weighted ball throwing besides the hold or besides our two pound med balls with two hands where it doesn't allow us to generate a lot of the forces with the arm. We want to teach the trunk and the hips to generate those forces because that's what study shows low velocity pitchers don't do well. They don't implement a good trunk and torso movement. They try to do it all with their arm. And we know professional pitchers, studies show professional pitchers put less torques in the arm than based on their body weight than all other levels of pitching. So it's really learning how to reduce the torques in your arm. And that's what the holds are doing. It's teaching you to internally rotate earlier. That's going to reduce the torques in your arm. And the only way you're going to internally rotate earlier is if you have good separation and you have good trunk movements and that, that energy gets to the arm early enough in the movement to then internally rotate. Not late, 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 and then try to finish late at the end. And then all those extra torques hit the arm that you don't really need to put on the arm. So, good question. Anything you want to add to that question? Well, I was just going to say, uh, thanks to Dr. Galbraith, he gave us some of the ASMI studies, and they were they were looking at the holds, and they were they were saying that that was one of the ones um, they recommended was okay because it didn't put torque on the arm because you're not throwing the ball, you know. So, as a teaching tool, I I'm, I'm guess that could help. But like Brent's saying, I, I think it's it's over glorified. Is uh, uh, people thinking that's um, what's going to, you know, get them 5, 10, 15 miles per hour, of, you know, fastball, like that, it, add, added to your fastball, it's not going to happen like that, man, it's like, um, you know, it, it sounds like people, you know, way back when sprinting was starting, when uh, you would just sprint all the time, or, you know, do really sports specific stuff, and that's how you got faster, and now, now we know that if you take a sprinter, and you put him in a weight room, and you get him stronger through squatting, deadlifts, building up his lower half, and then putting him back out there, he's going to shatter his sprint record time because he's built more strength in his lower half. So I think there's other ways uh, uh, to build up the athlete than just focusing on weighted ball holds. Yes, exactly. Very good. Next question. Justin asks, what exactly does early trunk rotation look like versus normal trunk rotation? What are some indications of early trunk rotation? So we were talking about how the holds would only occur if you have good hip-shoulder separation. So the key guys if you learn with 3x pitching is separating the phases. The first phase is the stride phase, the second phase is the throwing phase. The more you can separate those phases, I mean, when you're hitting front foot, you haven't started throwing yet, uh, the more time you have to, the more energy you'll be able to transfer, because the more energy you can create before you throw, and the more time you have to transfer that energy, and the more your, your distances or uh, range of motion your arm has to go through a full proper arm path and get into that early early internal rotation so obviously hip to shoulder separation is the key to a healthy uh, high velocity delivery and early trunk rotation would be the opposite of that so if i don't have optimal hip to shoulder separation which means my hips are opening and my shoulders are closing all the way against it if i don't have that i'm going to have the opposite i'm going to start the trunk early and create what's called early trunk rotation so obviously Optimal hip shoulder separation is starting the trunk late. Early trunk rotation is starting the trunk early. So it's obviously what we don't want. Most injury is going to link to early trunk rotation. Hyperangulation, which is, which is called arm drag. Um, late internal rotation, like we we're talking about with what the holds promote. Um, you know, just not being able to get, a, like I said, a healthy arm pass. So what's indicators of early trunk rotation? Guys that want to pull the trunk, or, I mean the glove side early, or guys that want to overload the, tr the glove side. Mm -hmm. So studies show high velocity pitchers have less left to right movement with the glove side so they don't pull hard left to right with the glove side they're more they just turn it over guys and it kind of locks down for them so no pulling of the glove side so an early trunk rotator he'd be at front foot and his glove side would be behind his back and his chest would be wide open that's an early trunk rotator um, you'll see high velocity guys even do that and those guys aren't really healthy guys i think the one guy that over scap loads is, is Strasburg. Strasburg. That's why he keeps having upper back problems because he's over scap loading. What do you think? And that causes um, the early trunk rotation, the hyperangulation. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But uh, what do you what do you think? Do you think Syndergaard even does that a little bit too? Yeah, I think he's because he doesn't Not, get nowhere his, near as much as Strasburg. Yeah, he doesn't get his hip all the way through. So if someone doesn't get their hip all the way through, they're going to start their trunk early because. Optimal hip shoulder separation is your hips are fully open and your shoulders are still close. Mm -hmm. So he's a little late with his hips. So yeah, he'd have a little bit of early trunk rotation. I don't think it's that. No, much. I didn't think it was. I significant, think but. if you're waiting for his hips to open, it does look like he's starting early and he might hyperangulate. I don't think he did too much. I looked at it; it wasn't that bad. But yeah, I do think his hips a little late. Mm -hmm. So to prevent trunk rotation is to get your hips all the way through as quick as possible. 
and, and make sure that your shoulders are still closed and you haven't initiated your glove side. So it's really those guys that want to pull the glove side early, uh, either before front foot strike or they hit front foot strike without their hips open, so they have to really aggressively pull the glove side. So it really is going to link a lot to what the hips are doing um, and, and also, of course, what the glove side is doing. Anything you want to add? Um, yeah, like I just like think of it too is when you see high velocity guys doing that, like Strasburg and, and, and Syndergaard, like both of those guys, you know, are extreme uh, athletes who have a lot of lower half power. I, I remember reading an article that said in college, Strasburg, you know, developed to uh, build himself up to a 36 inch vertical jump. And uh, obviously, we've seen Syndergaard on his Instagram page of him squatting over 400 pounds and uh, being six foot six, you know, how 240. Two, yeah, 240, just just a a, uh, a big guy. So I I would say um, you know that it, it's not just uh, um, power. Like I, I always used to say, just you know, linear power. But also now, just learning more that it's it's linear power with the mobility because you can have tons of power. And if you don't have uh, the mobility to get into those ranges and, opt and optimize the kinetic chain, then your body is going to want to overcompensate in some way. So I think guys that like, uh, um, you know, you know, Syndergaard and Strasbourg maybe have some mobility issues somewhere that's not allowing them to fully optimize uh, hitting those positions, but they're just overcompensating with it with just tons of power. Yeah, that? it's very good. And it's something I want to put a full video together on is power plane specific because there's this conventional wisdom that it's plane specific. Power is, to me, not plane specific, meaning like the different planes of movement, frontal, uh, sagittal, transverse, it's, which is a lateral move, a linear move, and a rotational move. It's not plane specific because power to me is in the muscle. So power is how the muscle fires. You know, it fires explosively with a lot of force. So what prevents it from moving, say, really well in a linear plane or a uh, sagittal plane, but not a, a lateral or frontal plane, is more the mobility. And I think that's what you, you made me think of. It's like, I think guys don't understand is, you can have a lot of power, but if you don't, like you were saying, if you don't have the mobility to move it through that plane, it might only work just in one plane, okay? And, and the mobility is preventing it from being converted or used in that other plane. So, like you said, like if pitching's multiplanar, so, mm -hmm. You can develop a lot of power, but if you don't have the mobility to move it through all the planes, the three planes, uh, then it's not being used. It's not being optimized, and it could be really hurting you uh, in this skill because it's it's a such a complicated movement. It's a multi-planar movement, so mm -hmm. that's key. It's making sure when you get the power, you also have the mobility to get it to, through all the planes of movement. Yeah, absolutely. And if you did that well, um, obviously early trunk rotation is going to be something that won't really exist. Early trunk rotation to me is overcompensation because something's not working. The power isn't maximizing in the frontal plane, so you're having to start the trunk early. So really, if you ultimately want to fix early trunk rotation is develop optimal mobility with maximum elite power, and you won't have early trunk rotation. Yeah. Good question, man. If you have a question, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, at Top Velocity, hashtag Pitch Tips, hashtag Pitch Tips. Ask your question, we answer on the show. 2X, 3X camps, guys. Steal on the books. Also, they'll go into the fall. They'll go into the winter. Big groups come down for the winter. If you can start looking for those, booking up for those, we'd love to have you. Stephen's got a place. You can reach out to him. Stay here and train with us. And we'll see you on the next episode.